What's up guys, Tom Davis here, America's Canine Educator. We're going to be answering a few different things here at the Upstate Canine Academy with me, America's Canine Educator. First thing we're going to talk about tonight is recall. So recall, um, come, whatever you want to call it, recalling your dog back to you is something that I get questions on probably every single day. And I'm going to go through a quick little fun tutorial on how to start your dog on recall and how to get it going. So the first thing they need to know is their name. That's about the only thing they need to know to start recall. Um, they just need to know the name so when you're talking to them or you're calling to them, they know that you're getting their attention and you're asking them to do something. The first thing you'll start off with is a flexi or a long lead. Um, the flexi is something that I rarely use, but I do use it for recall because it's, it's very in and out, which I like, um, so a dog can go and come back really, really quick. Here's a quick shot of a long lead. Um, this is a 30-foot cloth line. Um, I use this for various different things here at the academy, so this is something you should always keep in your toolbox as a dog trainer or a dog owner. So lastly, the last thing you're going to need is some sort of high reward food. So I use Stewart Pro Treats. It's 100% pure beef liver. Um, I like them because they dissolve really quick because they're very airy when they're dehydrated, which is really, really nice for the dogs to eat really quickly when you're doing uh, marking. So when you're giving a dog a treat, they eat it really, really fast. So they don't chew on it like a normal treat or normal food. It goes in and it's gone pretty quick. So the first thing you'll need is make sure you have your treats ready. Dogs are super time sensitive of when they get their food and when they don't because you're marking a command and your timing it has to be just about perfect for them to really understand and benefit from the, the actual command. So what you're going to do is let your dog wander off a little bit, not too far. You're going to get your long lead or your flexi. You're going to have your high reward food on your end ready to go. And you're going to call your dog. So you're going to say, Lakota, come. And you're going to give a little leash pressure if they don't see you. So it's really, really important that you say it nicely. Um, we're going to talk about tone in a different video, um, but it's super important that you say it nicely. So, Lakota, come. And then once your dog looks at you and comes to you, you're going to have that food immediately ready and give your dog the food right when they get to you. You're not going to reach out because that kind of directs them to be around you. When you recall your dog, you really want to get in a, in a habit of getting your dog to recall all the way to you. Was I? So, I so it's important to, when you're teaching the dog uh, anything really, especially puppies, is to not overexhaust the command because it'll get boring after the 10th, 11th, 12th time. So make sure um, you do it throughout the day. You just don't do it in long periods of time because like with anything, if you keep doing something over and over and over again, the high reward food doesn't become so high reward and what you're actually saying and actually telling your dog to do doesn't become as valuable and as important um, and as sincere as well. So you say the name, Lakota, come. They come, 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 come. You're good boy, good girl all the way to you as soon as they get to you. You're giving them the reward right here and then you're doing it within 10 to 15 seconds again. You're saying their name, they look at you, yes, good, and they get to you. You give them that reward as close to your body as possible and making sure that you're not overdoing it and you're not overstressing the dog making the, the command not as important by doing it 10 to 15 times. Do it 10 to 15 times a day, but do it in small increments. So the next question is, is what if my dog doesn't come? Good question. Um, what you want to do is you really want to be specific about uh, what collar you have on your dog, because um, that makes a huge difference. And you want to um, check up on our, our collar video at some point, and that kind of explains what I'm talking about there. But if your dog isn't responding, A, check your collar. See what they're responding to and why. Um, but it's important that you do constant pressure. So if you have your long lead or your flexi on and you're doing Lakota come, you're, you're giving that pop and that pressure until your dog then turns to you and comes to you. The reward um, typically for smaller dogs or puppies, because most puppies uh, and younger dogs are very food motivated, um, it shouldn't be an issue. But if you get an older dog that you're teaching come and you're yanking on your dog, and they're not responding or they don't care um, what you have to say. Um, your communication needs a little bit of uh, touching up to do. And you can look for our caller video um, and our communication video as well to touch base on that. But if your dog isn't responding, it's, it's really, really um, a big issue if you're not consistent, um, especially for dogs, um, because they're going to blow you off each time. It just depends on their threshold on how long it takes you to give up, which means if you're pulling on your dog, come, come, come and they don't come, they know they need 20 pulls in order for you to give up and you, and you give up on the dog. So make sure that when you're starting a command that goes with anything, you don't give up. You continually to do it until you get through that hump um, and then that way your dog knows that you're going to stick, 
you're going to stick through it until the end, and they can't get a, an easy way out. So make sure that when you're doing your come, if your dog isn't coming, to consistently just come, 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 say their name, say their name, come, come, communication, and use your flexi or your long lead as backup to give that pressure pop. And then as soon as they turn and look at you, you're saying, yes, good boy, good girl. And then you're recalling them, and you have your treat. And then, bam, give them the reward. And then once they give the reward, good come, good come, and then kind of walk away and end it, and then do it another 30 seconds from there. So lastly, when you're teaching recall or you're teaching come, um, you want to do it in, in a state where it's a pretty controlled environment. So you don't want to do it in a state of mind of where they're playing with their buddies or they're playing with the, the other pack members within your pack. You really want to make sure that you do it um, when there's low stimulation and not a lot going on. Because that way, and, and that goes for any command. You don't want to teach a dog something um, like come or sit or stay or really anything with a high stress level until you get further on in obedience. And then you want to actually test those, you want to test those behaviors and you want to test those commands out within a high uh, stimulation level, but that's further on. But for now, when you're teaching your dog any type of um, new command, you want to do it in a controlled, um, really easy uh, environment. So it's a, let's put it this way, it's a super easy test for them to pass. And that's how you want to build your increments up to get to levels two and three and etc. in obedience. So it's important that uh, when you're doing it, just do it super, super controlled and super stress-free. So thank you so much, guys, for watching our, our come or our recall episode. I appreciate it so much. Follow along with all of our videos every single Monday night on www.youtube.com slash America's Canine Ed. Come on, come on. Come. Yeah.